the psychically bloody see everything. Oh, I've just seen someone over there, look, and all that stuff. But we are accessing that level of awareness and therefore our point of observation of this reality is coming not from in this world. When you're in this world and of it, then you're buggered, really, because all you've got is this world to tell you what reality is and who you are. When you open your consciousness and, and move your point of observation, you are in this world physically, at least as a projection, but you are not of it in terms of your point of observation. And they're the people that stand out in society. They're the ones that people who are in this mode say, you're crazy, you're, 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 you're mad. No, no, he's different because he's got a different point of observation to you. That's all it is. We're the same but with different point of observation within infinity. There was a time when even this reality, I would say, we had this sense of oneness, this sense of connection, celebrating uniqueness and uh, joyous, joyous in diversity. But slowly, surely, maybe quicker than slowly and surely, our minds have been taken over and encased in this bubble, this disconnection from the great infinite into this body consciousness. And of course, when people come into this world now as what we call babies, and their consciousness enters this world, immediately the programming starts. Often it's parents programming children into the norms. Oh, you can't do that. What will the neighbors say? Oh, you can't do that. I want you to work in a bank. You've disappointed me. You want to go and walk in India. Well, be disappointed then. Sod off. You go and work in the bank. I'm off to India, mate. <laughs> and this kind of symbolizes this picture from earlier in the war memorial in Sydney, Australia, the way we've been encased and suppressed and, and, and therefore live this false identity, this mask that I was talking about, a false identity. We are now being offered the opportunity, for, not least for reasons I'll come to, to actually break through this. And this is not literally breaking through something. It's a vibrational um, freedom. Because once we open our minds and open this, because, you know, I would say that the real Trinity, the real Trinity ain't Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's left brain, right brain, heart, chakra, vortex, the center, the balance point. When these three things are working in unison, we have the balance of all possibility. We have the right brain connection um, out into the beyond. We have the access of creativity, of seeing a different spin on life, of uniqueness, of, of all these things. The left brain, which is here for a reason, decodes this stuff and brings it down into a structural level that we can deal with within this reality. And this is the balance point between the two, which takes us way, way out there into realms of understanding beyond words, beyond anything that we can understand through this level. And those three things working together, decoding reality, bring balance. This would never allow this uh, to um, get involved in the stuff that we've been talking about, in control, in abuse, in war, in conflict. That's not, it wouldn't go there. If this is going to be used to function within this reality, it is on this and this terms, not on this term on the terms of this isolated um, left brain consciousness that is isolated from the rest of um, existence, working in its own sub-world of structure and competition and all the rest of it. When these three things are working together, then we can decode reality in a way that the left brain alone could never even think about doing. And when we start to do that, when we start to open our minds and all these phrases we use that absolutely encapsulate what we're talking about. When we open our minds and start to uh, access and decode a much wider range of frequencies, suddenly the um, reality that we create, the way we see this reality and perceive it of what it is, just expands into a, into a level of understanding that is just beyond anything we could imagine before when we're here, thinking everything's real and solid and apart and divided. And that's when the box goes on. 
The difference between the two is fantastic in terms of our perception of reality and we are now in a process where this is taking place where this box is coming off more and more people and the true nature of who we are is starting to be understood and expressed. When I started on this uh, journey uh, talking about some of this stuff, not like much as I am now, but in the same themes, uh, it was like, you know, get me a wall, I'll, I'll give you an impression. No one wanted to know, it was crazy and all the rest of it. But over the last 20 years, I've been, almost been a barometer of it. I have seen this incredible change where more and more people are expanding their consciousness and going, whoa, I can see it now. Why can I see it before? Because you weren't decoding reality in a way that you could see it. You were stuck in the box, stuck in the vibrational box where we all start out. And talking of boxes, these entities, this force that seeks to control us is not an all-knowing, all-powerful, all-wise force. It is able to control us only by putting us in a smaller box than it is in. That's only the way it can do it. Anyone who wants control over people Anyone who is so insecure that they need control over people because there's nothing more that absolutely uh, shows blatant uh, insecurity, extreme insecurity, than wanting to control um, other people and wanting to know the outcome of everything before the game starts. That's insecurity. Secure people, they kind of, okay, oh, it turns out, it turns out, that's fine but I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna enjoy the moment and live the moment. No, 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 insecure people, no, how's it gonna turn out, all the rest of it. And so these people um, are desperately insecure and there's a good reason for that. The reptilian genetics, the reptilian brain is very much about survival. Survival, 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 fear of not surviving. And because of the nature of what we're talking about, these entities have a massive fear of not surviving. Everything is not about survival. This is why they want to know the outcome of the game before the game starts. Because, oh, well, survival, survival. I, and uh, there can be no um, kind of states of flux. I can't deal with states of flux when I don't know the outcome. We've got to control the outcome. Everything is control, control, left brain structure. And so they've had to control us who have the potential to be infinite possibility having an experience in this reality, which is what we are, we have to be put in a smaller box than them. And so what they're working on is intellectual knowledge, if you like, of how reality works and therefore how they can manipulate it and suppressing the knowledge of, among humans uh, of how reality works. So they are in a position of power. If I know things of great significance and other people don't, I'm in a position of power over them. That's why we've had the suppression of knowledge and the uh, passing it over through the secret society network to the chosen few. Knowledge is power, that's what it's about. But it's intellectual knowledge. It's cleverness, not wisdom, that they, they work with. They're very clever. The way they've structured society to get the outcome they want is very clever, but it isn't wise. And cleverness without wisdom is the most destructive force on earth. It's very clever to create an atomic bomb. It's not very wise to do so. They are not the same thing. And so... And so we're not dealing with an all-powerful force here. We're dealing with, with a frightened, fearful, frightened of not surviving, insecure force that needs to control to pander to its own insecurity and fear of non-survival. So when we come out of the box, as we're coming out of the box, this force ceases to have that power over us because we're no longer in a smaller box than uh, as, that it's in, in terms of knowledge and awareness. And I always use this uh, an analogy of the ball on top of the water, on top of the tank. You know when you, you go through all these different levels of how how we are attacked mentally, emotionally, and physically to suppress us and to hold us in, this, in the box, in the bubble. 
That tells us something about us, which people, people don't realize. Oh, it's negative. That no, no, it's not negative. It's extremely positive if you want to use those terms because it's telling us who we really are. The level of suppression on multi-levels, in multi-ways, that they've had to go to and continue to go to to hold us in servitude shows the, the, the potential and, of, of, of genius and magnificence that we really are. And that's our natural state, is multidimensional connection. We are in an unnatural state. We've been manipulated into it, one of disconnection, of awareness of that. And if you think, take the analogy of the ball, if you push a ball, uh, or you want to put a ball in an unnatural state, i.e. on the bottom of a tank instead of at the top, its natural state, then you have to push it down and you have to hold it there. You have to hold it there because once you let go, boom, natural state. And so what they're doing is throwing all this stuff at us to symbolically hold us at the bottom of the tank in an unnatural state. What we think are norms and the way life is and the way humans are is actually anything but the norm. It's the way we've been suppressed into. It's not our true natural state, which is multidimensional connection in this world, experience it, but not of it, and awareness of being not of it while we're experiencing it. That's our natural state. And we're now uh, getting the opportunity as this um, information comes to light, and, and for other reasons I'll come to uh, in, in a second or so, or a minute or so, um, that we just need to open that telescope to open um, ourselves to a greater level of awareness and allow it to come in. You know, people say, when's the cavalry come in? Well, you know, the cavalry ain't coming because it's already here. It's in the space that we are occupying, in the space that we are experiencing now, are all those levels of consciousness which, when, when connected with, will bring us to a state of awareness and potential for creativity that we would even we would think was beyond belief at the moment it's there and it's not the cavalry has to come to us it's we need to go to the cavalry because what it is it's always there we just need to open our minds so we can connect with its level of vibration the idea of this crowd is to lower our vibration at the body consciousness level so that there is a disconnection vibrationally with higher states of consciousness. Because when you look at fear and uh, its sub parts like stress and guilt and all the rest of it, all this stuff they, they, they leave behind when they go into a near body state or a right brain state, left brain shut down like Jill Balty Taylor. When you rid yourself of those emotions, you start to realize, as these people have, the, the, the nature of who we are. But what, the, um, what we're looking at at the moment, this time, is the opportunity to expand our consciousness so that we vibrationally connect with the cavalry the level of consciousness, the level of awareness, the point of observation that is just there waiting for us to, con to, to connect with it. So when you are in a state of fear and all these other sub-emotions that I talk about of fear, they are low vibrational emotions. What we talk about when we're in those states, God, I feel so heavy today. Oh, I feel so dense. Yes, because the energy field, your energy field, slows down vibrationally when we get in those states and there is a disconnection from higher states of awareness to do with vibrations, it's to, to do with frequency connections and all the rest of it. So it's up to us to open ourselves to these levels of consciousness and not for those levels of consciousness to come down here to where the state we're in. Why? Because they can't. Because of the level of consciousness they're at, they're vibrating to a certain frequency and if, we, if we're down here, never the twain shall meet. We need to go and connect with it. And it's when you open your mind and your consciousness and you start to make those connections, that's when suddenly you think, why didn't I see it before? It's, I can see it now. We're in control of this, not some bloody entities shape-shifting themselves around the sodding world. 
We're in control. That's the great secret they don't want us to know. Absolutely it is. So this is the level at which the change will take place. And when that takes place, our awareness changes, our level of consciousness changes. This changes because this is a projection of our level of consciousness. The projection, if we start looking out there, then we're in trouble. It's in here. It's when we do that that we start getting out of the box. It's a vibrational escape and a vibrational uh, getaway car caused by us changing and opening to a higher level of consciousness. Now this is doing the rounds uh, quite a lot at the moment. The law of attraction, they call it. I've been talking about this for years um, in terms of what you put out is what you pull back. Um, but I think there are a lot more elements to it than, than, than some uh, people seem to think. When you um, are in a certain vibrational state because of your emotional, mental state, all the rest of it, you're putting out a vibration that reflects that. It's like a, mag I call it magnetic, um, a magnetic attraction basically. A vibrational magnetism I call it. And that is going to lock in to vibrational fields of like frequency and it's going to draw them towards you like a magnet. So what you put out, you lock into and draw towards you. When people, you know, I, I've met so many people that keep attracting the same kinds of people into their lives. And I'm watching and I'm thinking, sorry now, not another one. It's like just the same as that last bloke and the one before him. Why? Because what's going out ain't changing, so what's coming in isn't changing. Because what we draw into us as relationships and uh, jobs and experiences and all that stuff is um, a, a reflection, a holographic reflection of us. We all live in our own little universes, really. There are points where we, we share the same basic reality, but we live in our own universes because what we're putting out is what we're drawing towards us. Um, the question is, how do we change what we're putting out? Fear. We attract to us what we most fear. When I was, when I was a kid, I was terrified of dogs when I was a kid. And when, whenever I went out, the dogs always came for me. I mean, it, it really, I mean, honestly, you got a complex. I lived on a, 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 a council estate in Leicester, and it's, it's full of houses now, this place, but there was a, a green in the center of it. And as I walked across, the, I used to get the bus. It was only one, one stop. I used to get the bus in the end to avoid going across this green because I went across this green. The dogs came out for me. Row, row, row. My mates left them alone. And we go, hey, bloody hell, why am I so unlucky? Why me? I'm frightened of dogs and they come for me. You're not frightened. They're going to hear you. Why? Vibrational attraction. Same with the things we like. We can attract them. Relationships. Relationships are a vibrational attraction. We draw them in. Um, when we, um, we, we sync with people, we sync with their, uh, them energetically, you have a relationship. Then, for whatever reason, someone might change and their en energetic uh, uh, field changes, their magnetism changes, or whatever, their vibrational field changes, and suddenly it's not syncing with that person anymore. In the holographic play out world, we say that relationship has broken down. And, and they've, they've, they've parted. Well, they've parted vibrationally. And sometimes, you know, that, that's good because you, 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 you get things from each other and you learn from each other and then, hey, it's time to move on and, and have other experiences. But it's the vibrational connection that draws them in. It's the same with jobs. It's the same with luck. Luck. Why are some people lucky and why are some people unlucky? Because what they're putting out is what they're drawing towards them. I watch in, in sport and football and stuff and sports people. I, these, these people that, um, they get so close to winning, but they never quite can win. It's almost like they're frightened of winning. And when I observe some of this stuff uh, psychologically, it's almost as if they can't believe that it's possible for them to win. Oh no, that happens to other people. It doesn't happen to me. So when you get to that point where you're just about to achieve, somehow 
in the holographic play out world, you manifest something that actually stops you winning, even though it seems to be a, 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 no problem, it's going to happen. And, and, and it's what people um, call um, having a self-destruct button. Just when you're about to achieve something, uh, where's the button? Boom. Oh, something's happened. And, and it's, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, achieve what looked is obviously going to happen. It's because of the, the, the energy we're putting out, which is a reflection of our mental and emotional state. And one real big energetic magnetic attraction of reality is intent, I've found. Intent. An intent. This is what I, uh, I'm going to achieve. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I will do. When that intent goes out, it goes out as a vibrational field and it draws back towards us all that we need to achieve that intent every time. The thing is, at this point, it breaks down with so many people because what they need to um, experience to achieve the intent they say they want is not something they'd like to experience. So I'll bugger that for a game of soldiers, I'm not having that, I don't want it that badly. And when we start to, to transform, um, things start to um, change in our energy field. And um, when that happens, things that we were drawing towards us in the old energetic state um, are not the, making a, a vibrational synchronization anymore. And so, in the, again, in the holographic play-out world, relationships break down, or you lose your job, or you, uh, you move home, or something happens. Your life changes in the play-out world of the projected holographic reality because what's projecting it has changed. And so, when we put out an intent, this is what I want to do, I want to expand my mind, I want to open my mind, I want to connect the true magnitude of who I am, there are things that come towards you that you don't um, often like very much, but it's necessary to break down those structures within us so that um, that intent can be fulfilled. This, this um, DVD has been going around for a little while now called The Secret, which is based on the uh, law of attraction. Um, and, you know, I think the principle, there's a lot to be said for it, but I, I do think it can be very um, uh, simplistic sometimes, this stuff about law of attraction. The idea that if you keep visualizing a Ferrari, that somehow you're going to have a Ferrari, and you know, and you put Ferraris all around your house, you know, I'm visualizing, I'm going to get a Ferrari. Um, well, the thing is, maybe you will get a Ferrari. Good luck to you. Don't see um, myself anything in them, but that's just me. But if your journey what you've come to experience and what you've come to do um, does not sync with having a Ferrari, then you can wallpaper your bloody house with Ferraris. It ain't going to happen. Uh, it ain't as simple as visualize a Ferrari, law of attraction, broom, 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 here I go. It's the totality of the energy field that we create that draws in our um, attracted reality. One part of that is the, the range of energies or vibrations and frequencies that we are accessing. The more expanded that is, the, the larger our state of awareness, the more our energy field in embodiment is uh, affected by that, that affects what goes out, affects what comes in. What our energy field contains from all these different um, uh, influences together makes the magnetic connection which we draw into us. The um, astrological um, influences our own energy field also um, uh, affect the overall mix of the vibrational field that we are projecting. Because as I said earlier, when you're born at a certain time, the energy um, nature of uh, you and where you're born is affected by where the planets are, so you're going to have a, a slightly different or sometimes significantly different energy field influenced by uh, the planetary and uh, uh, star influences than um, someone born at a different time. And then there's also the journey. We come in with a certain amount of coding that takes us through a journey and sometimes maybe a challenge that um, 
uh, we uh, will then follow without realizing we're following it. And so when I look at my life, there are many times when I've said that, why me? What have I done? I remember in the early 90s, I'm thinking, I only want to kind of be spiritual like, and I get all this shite thrown at me. You know, and it's like, why me? Oh my God, what have I done? I'm only trying to do some bloody help. Come on, what's going on? And then I look back and I see those nightmare experiences as my greatest gift. My greatest gift. We, we are often offered our greatest gifts magnificently disguised as our worst nightmares. Because we are what we are at this point, not despite what has happened to us, nice, not so nice, and all in between, but because of what has happened to us, that's what's brought us to this state. And there was a, there was a time in my life, like everyone else's life, when I was, a, um, uh, shall we say, aware of how people saw me. You know, as you do when you're a teenager and then you grow up, you, uh, even older, you, you're always saying, you know, how people see me and you're on the telly and, you know, oh, I like, oh, people like me and all that stuff. And you are, in, in other words, you are, um, you are uh, looking for external approval because that helps your insecurity. When I went through the extraordinary levels of ridicule that I went through in this country, in the 1990s particularly, it was a nightmare. I couldn't go down um, any place in Britain without being laughed at, ridiculed, all that stuff. And yet, what it did was clear me completely, or as much as I'm aware of, of that um, need for approval. Of that, here we go. Fear of what other people think of me. That's what it did. So, so many of the why me's, um, we really ought to ask, why me? Why does it all happen to me? Great question. Why does it always happen to you? Because it's here that the power is. When we realize this is where the, the, the projection's coming from, then if we change this, the projection, the holographic physical experience, must change in line with the change in the projection and therefore our life changes. But it don't change out there, it changes in here. And, and my experience of life now allows me to continue to take ridicule and abuse and all that stuff, but I don't give a damn anymore. I don't give a damn. It's changed my reality. There's a lot to be spoken uh, uh, for about worst nightmares because so often they are our greatest gifts. Not always, but so often. And moving to another level of consciousness is, is moving our point of observation from within this uh, holographic reality, um, this physical reality, this, this suppressed reality, into that level of reality that people experience in out-of-body experiences. From that perspective, this world looks totally different. If we can move our point of observation of this reality while we're still in it, then everything changes. Because the level of consciousness changes and therefore the problems we wish to change and the things we don't like in this reality can change because the level of consciousness is higher than those that created the, 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 um, the problems. So it's moving our point of observation to another level and then everything changes here. It can't otherwise. And it's interesting, when you look at these things, the astrological influences, the, um, the level or, or, or range of frequencies that we are accessing, which we call awareness, um, the, the, the energy fields that, that, that we have, the auric field, which then attracts to it what it's putting out, 
the life journey, the why me uh, stuff, all of them have one thing in common. They all come from within. Not out there. There is no out there. It all come from within. What the manipulators want us to do and constantly uh, encourage us to do is to look out there. As um, Gandhi said, you must be the change you want to see in the world. You must be, because you are the world, your world, and together the world. And therefore, when we change, the world changes. If we don't change, the world can't change, because the world is us and we are the world. What, what the manipulators want us to do is look out there. And one level is looking for someone to blame all the time when things go wrong in our lives. And I understand that. It's, it seems like that sometimes. You're to blame. You're responsible. And what's that doing? It's saying, you have my power. You have my power. You have my power. Because I haven't got control over my life. You have. Because you're to blame. Therefore, you must have power over me. <laughs> Giving power away. We do it all the time. When we go, hold on a second. How why have I created this situation? How can I uncreate it? Now, where's the power gone? Thank you, I'll have it back. You're not to blame. I'm not even to blame. But I'm just using my knowledge now to change the reality I don't like because I have the power because I'm creating it. Therefore, you don't have power over my life. I have power over my life. Thank you very much. Completely different point of observation. Now I'll change my life because you're not in control of it. I am. Luck. Luck. Like, oh, I'm so unlucky. Why? Put it out, bring it back. You know, I, I, I've observed so many people, bloody hell, I've observed me, observed me bloody self through my life. When you see the same recurring thing, oh, I'm so unlucky, oh, yeah. Why? Why? Power back, I'm in control. So, when we look out there, and this is what we're encouraged to do, it's like looking at a movie screen because you don't like the movie, i.e. your experienced reality, and starting to shout at the computer screen or at the movie screen. Oh, yeah, I don't like this movie. Change it, change it. You're mad, mate. It's a bloody movie. It's a projection. You can't change it by shouting at it. It's your fault. The projection... He's back there, or behind there in this case. That's where it's coming from. So if you want to change the movie, mate, go and find the projector, and then this must change. You ain't going to change the movie by shouting at the sodding screen. But what do we do? Every day we shout at the sodding screen. Because we don't go to the projector, which is projecting it. Why? Because we, it's much easier to think it's someone else's fault. We talk about, you know people controlling and stuff like that. A few people can't control billions unless billions allow themselves to be controlled. Responsibility, let's take it back here. <laughs> We're holograms, projections, whole world's a projection. It's us that is projecting it. It's a situation I call combing the mirror. If you... Um, if you want to comb your hair, you don't comb the mirror. Because it don't affect your bloody hair, because it's a reflection. If you want to, if you want to um, change your hair, you comb your hair, and the mirror then reflects it. This physical reality is a mirror. And we're combing the mirror all the time. And then we say, my hair's not changing, I'm combing that mirror. This experienced physical reality is merely a reflection of that. We have the power. We just need to take it back from this level of division, apartness, can'tness, to isness, I amness, I am all that is, ever has been, and ever will be ness. What a transformation that will make of this reality. And a part of this on a holographic level or energetic level is moving into the right brain. Not moving out of the left brain and boarding over the doors. We need that to function in this reality. But having this serve the higher reality instead of being the governor, dictating reality. 
And to do that, we need to start being at peace with this terrible crime of being different. If you don't want to be different, or you're not happy with expressing yourself as a unique expression of all that is, a unique point of observation within um, the infinite mind, then stay out of the right brain. And, and don't even think about transformation, because that part of us that wants not to express that uniqueness lives in there. That doesn't want uniqueness, it wants structure, conformity, rules. I like rules, I do, I love them. This wants to express uniqueness. This is me, I am me, I am free. I am a different uh, expression of all that is. So are you, pleased to meet you. What do we say? Who are you? Oh, I'm a coal miner. Oh, I'm a journalist. Oh, I'm a 70-year-old person from Essex. No, that's what you're experiencing. Wouldn't it be great? Hello, nice to meet you. Who are you? I'm um, all that is having an experience. Oh, so am I. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? All right. That's what we are. So it's starting to let go this fear of being different, this fear of being different to the norm. Oh, what will my mother say? Or what will me the mates at work say? Or what if I do? Well, I tell you what, this is my view, just my view, okay? If they, mother, father, family, people at work, blokes down the pub, can't respect your right to express the full magnitude of who you are, Sodom, mate! What's... Sodom! Bloody hell, all the, uh, my friends, they, they try to make me conform, they're ever so good. Oh, really? And all this is blood stick in the water. No! No! Their families and, and parents and children and all that stuff, they can, they can have great connections and, and, and have a wonderful relationship. But just because they're parents and children and, and, and sisters and brothers doesn't mean they necessarily uh, do that. What we call brothers and sisters and all this stuff, they're holographic um, uh, projections. That's what they are on this level. We are consciousness. They are consciousness. We're all co one consciousness. It doesn't mean that, that one consciousness is more special or, or, or in relationship to another one, and so we have to conform to that one thinks because they're our parents. Sod that. Respect me. Respect you. Everyone's a winner. Tell me to live the life you want me to lead, to lead uh, on your bike, darling. This is, this is, this is what it takes to, to move out of suppression into freedom. And you're not kind of being horrible about it and saying, oh, you know, horrible and that, that business. You're saying, if you can't uh, respect my right to be who I am, then you're just going to have to move aside because I am going to be who I am, whether you like it or not. You can respect it or you can not respect it, support it or not respect it, but it's happening because this is me. And it's, you know, it's amazing when you actually take these situations on, how other people around you actually do start to, to come towards you and say, okay, I'll see it. And if they don't, well, they don't, fair enough. I'll see you on another dimension. We'll talk about it. No problem. We'll have all of them vibrational beers. <laughs> Free your mind. Free your mind. I found this. I only found this this morning. I only put these things together finally this morning. Funny, funny enough, I'll just keep getting ideas in my head. Um, and I found this one. Stop making excuses. That's absolutely um, a brilliant point. Because this is what we do. We, we decide that we, we want to do something. Um, and then we start making excuses about why we don't do the things we need to do to achieve what we decide we want to do. So all the time we throw little excuses in the way. Oh yeah, I'd like to do it, but the Super Bowl's on. Oh, I'd like to do it, but there's a good match on tonight. Oh, I'd like to do it, but this is happening, and so I've got to put it off and do that. Well, you know, I'd like, I'd like to tell these people around me, 
that they're not going to suppress my life anymore and I'm going to express my full uniqueness. But what I thought is, you know, there's something coming up. I don't want to upset people, so, so I'll, I'll put it off. I'll do it next week. All the time we can do this. Now, we either want to be free or we don't want to be free. We're going to go for it or we're not going to go for it. Of course, there's diplomatic ways of doing it, but so often I see, and I do understand it, wanting to avoid what is necessary to achieve what people claim they want and the excuse list just goes on and on and on and on and on and instead of uh, you're to blame it's like how can I find a situation to explain away why I'm not doing what I say I want to do clear your mind this is a good one I've uh, done a lot of this over the years from what I used to be you know I, I have this thing which I, I call the deathbed experience or the deathbed reality, even a way of putting it. You're lying on your deathbed, you've got 10 minutes to live, and you're looking back at your life. How much of what wound you up, made you unhappy, made you stressed, made your life unpleasant, you got angry about, how much of it in that deathbed experience, 10 minutes to go, actually matters? sodding next to nothing, if that. Nothing! And it's another way that we get trapped in this out there holographic reality, which is getting attached to things that don't matter. You heard what he said about me. I'm disgusted. I'm so upset. Don't give a shit, mate. Don't give a shit. It doesn't matter. What's it matter? You know why it matters? Because you've made it matter. I think that David Icke's mad, crazy, an idiot. Thank you for sharing that with me. End of freaking story. Write your opinion. I have a right not to be affected by it. Doesn't matter. Thinks I'm, a, I'm crazy? Good luck to him. So ah, brilliant. I don't think I'm crazy. I'm not affected by that. And I don't get stressed. Oh, how can you say that to me? I'm now getting stressed. I'm, I'm getting into a, a low vibrational state. Why? For something that doesn't matter. If I'm lying on my deathbed, I look at all these people that have heard this abuse at me, and all these situations, I go, that was funny. What a laugh. What a laugh, really. Right? And yet at the time, you can get really caught in it. And if we clear our minds of what matters, because, again, what it is, it's moving our point of observation from this reality to the, uh, the out-of-body reality, because when we're out of body, none of this crap matters. You talk to out-of-body experiences. Hey, a Jill Bolte Taylor, when she's having the stroke and went in the right brain as a, the prime reality. Hey, this is La La Land. It's lovely. Oh, it doesn't matter. All that stress is all gone. I haven't got that anymore. Um, and the trick is moving that perception of the out-of-body higher consciousness, there is no time, no sequence, all that stuff, moving that into this reality, not 10 minutes before we move out of here, but when we're in it and living it and experiencing it, because that will completely change as we move that point of observation, the way we live our life, what we can achieve, and the way we interact with, with, with reality. So much that we think matters doesn't friggin' matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm in another dimension now. What was all that that went on? I can't remember, mate. How are you doing? All right, I haven't seen you since you were um, you know, uh, in Egypt. In what so how are you doing now? Doesn't matter. It's just an experience. And this is the sequence that I found uh, people seem to go to and I, I through and I went through. The first stage of the opening to freedom in its true sense, is to realize we are in a situation of slavery. Because again, making excuses, hiding from what um, you don't want to face. You know, it's like uh, the, 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 the greatest power over people is when you tell them something they want to hear. So if you tell them uh, that something's happening that they don't really want to think is happening, and then someone comes along and says, ah, oh, load of rubbish, mate, load of rubbish. No, it's fine, honestly. You want to believe this guy, because you want to believe it's fine. And so um, we are in denial of the situation we're in. Not people in this 
room, obviously. But in general, humanity is in denial because they really don't want to face it. So much, much better to hide it, hide away from it. Oh, no, it's a load of rubbish. The guy's mad, mate, and all that stuff. But there comes a time if we ignore it when it comes in our face and then we've got to face it. And people come to that conclusion at different points. But first of all, we face the situation we're in. Okay, now we can deal with it. It's like when you're in a, when you're in a situation where you can see the dictator, it's not a very nice situation, but at least you're one step ahead of being in a society that's controlled by dictators you cannot see, touch and taste, because at least you know there's something to deal with. Stage one. Stage two, choosing not to be a slave. Choosing freedom. Real freedom. Not the uh, illusion of freedom that we call freedom. Most people on this planet don't want bloody freedom. I, I, I meet um, people... Um, in the Christian movement in America. They talk about freedom and some of them talk about this conspiracy on a five cents level and stuff. They don't want bloody freedom. You know, I, I met one once in Tucson. I was talking to him about how the, uh, what happened to the Native Americans and all that stuff and, and we're going on and, and this guy is, is such a white supremacist, it's unbelievable. And I said to him, do you know, and, and you know, we were talking, we were talking at an anti-Illuminati bloody rally, right? And I said to him, Look, mate, I don't know um, who <laughs> terrifies me more at the thought of being in power, the people I'm trying to expose, or you who's trying to expose them as well. They don't want freedom. They want the freedom, they want the freedom to re replace an imposition they don't like with an imposition that they do like, their own belief system. Crikey, I, I've been, you know, so, uh, harangued by Christian people in America so often because I'm talking about Jesus and stuff and, and the, the sun god. Well, okay, don't accept it then. You believe that, I'll believe this. We'll have a beer, forget about it. No, must impose myself. You're not interested in freedom. So when we choose freedom, it's real freedom. And freedom, funnily enough, is not the freedom for us to do what we like at the expense of other people. It's the freedom of everyone to have the same rights as us. Freedom is not freedom for us to take the freedom to impose on others. It's accepting the freedom of others the same as we accept the, expect the freedom for ourselves. So, when we talk about banning freedom of speech, oh, no one is against freedom of speech. It's like being a against, um, uh, you know, wife uh, uh, violence. Um, no one's for that. And no one's um, uh, for um, the end of free speech. But then they start dealing with what free speech is. Oh, no, you can't have free speech to say that. I believe in free speech, but that's going too far. No, you can't be a little bit pregnant, mate. Free speech is free speech, OK? <laughs> you can't edit it, right? And when it comes to freedom of speech, you know, um, people um, um, should have the right to say what they want and all the rest of it. And anyway, don't we want to know what people think about things rather than it all going on in the shadows and no one knowing what's really going on? Of course, freedom of speech is freedom of speech. It's freedom, funnily enough, for people to, take, to say things we don't like and to uh, uh, stand for their freedom to say things we don't like as much as to say, uh, stand for freedom to say what we do like. Freedom is freedom. It's indivisible. So, I choose freedom. I'm not going to be a little bit free. I'm going to be free. And I have a simple philosophy. People say, oh, freedom, that means you do what you like. I have a simple philosophy. Do what you like so long as you don't impose it on other people. Real simple. And people say, well, no, that would be chaos. That would be anarchy. No, it wouldn't. The opposite of that. Well, what about people who murder people? Well, I think that's imposing the, uh, your will on somebody. Do you think, do you think that might be that? I think, it, I think we might just kind of, you know, I mean, and, and we can do this. Someone wants a party. Some, some kids want a party. The local people don't want the noise. What happens in this world now? Left brain structure. You've got to make a decision. Are they going to have the party? Are you going to have the noise? We'll go to the residents. They've got to vote, okay? Now, what we can do... 
They want a party. They don't want the noise. We must find a place for these kids to have a party where these people are not affected by the noise. Both, everyone's a winner, sorted, harmony. This is what society can do. Most of the problems are not real problems. They're just the fact that we don't want to sort them out because we don't want to uh, change society in a way that will sort them out. Simple as that. And when we choose freedom, again, I choose freedom, but not when there's an R in the month there's a good match on. And, and not if I have to face this official bloke who looks pretty nasty. I don't choose freedom then. Making excuses. We can make excuses not to express our freedom all the time. And if we do that, then we're never going to be truly free. Then we get, after ex uh, uh, acknowledging our situation, making the choice to change, then we can start the transformation. Why? Because when we go for it, real choice to be free, then everything changes. Energetically we change. What we draw to us changes. People come in and out of our lives that um, add to our understanding and our ability to go down this road of freedom. Everything changes. Transformation. And it's a wonderful thing. It can be a challenge. I, I love this film, The Dead Poet Society. Robin Williams in this uh, film when he's teaching the kids and, and basically saying look at the world from a different angle. He used to stand on his desk or their desks and he was asked why are you standing on the desk and he said I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. You see the world looks very different from up here. You don't believe me? Come and see it for yourselves. Again, when we start to make this transformation we start to move with it our point of observation of the world. And if we move our point of observation, we're going to start acting in different ways, we are going to start perceiving in different ways, and therefore, again, we've got to let go the fear of what other people think. Oh, you can't stand on the desk, it's stupid, sir. That's what so many people do. Ooh, no, about not do that, they'll laugh at me. Boom. Real freedom, choose freedom, no excuses. And you look at uh, the world from a different angle. You stop seeing yourself in these terms. Little me, I can see myself down there somewhere. Looking in the mirror, this is me, hey, it's good. It's a computer, it's a computer. It's, it's a, a wonderful, incredible thinking uh, energy construct with consciousness um, uh, up to a point. And it's the great vehicle for us to experience this world, but it's not who we are. And if we identify with it, we identify, a, 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 apart from it being a vehicle, we identify with um, the computer and not us. And when we move our point of observation from the fact that we're little me, and this is, this is me, and I'm Ethel Jones and Charlie Smith, out into the... Uh, greater awareness and we observe us and the world from out there, then the world looks totally different, situations look totally different, we look totally different and what bothers us and hassles us and all the rest of it just fades away. It doesn't matter. And this energy field changes what we draw in and we can create changes and we are transforming the outer by uh, transforming the inner. As this happens, we start to expand the range of frequencies. We're decoding the levels of awareness that we are able to access to give us insight and intuitive knowing. My God, we're on our way. This is the level of the transformation. This is the level of the revo revolution, if you want to call it that. It's not guns, it's consciousness. And we wake up. And as that happens, we wake up and we go, why didn't I see it before? So many times people have said that. I can see it now, it's so bloody obvious. Why didn't I see it before? Because that's what you were before. And then suddenly, boom, boom, point of observation. Oh my God, it's obvious. And this is happening now, this wake up. It's happening. It can be challenging, mine. Not saying it's a doddle, because that sums up some of the ways I felt over the years and last Tuesday. No, 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 not quite so much now. But this was, this was a great one of me in 1991. I tell you what, that really kind of absolutely encompasses um, symbolically my inner self. And why? Because when we start to transform, what we put out changes, what we draw in changes, and the outer world appears to collapse. 
Oh my God, what do we say? My life's falling apart, mate. Mine did. Because the construct going out fell, the construct it was creating fell, my experience, my life's falling apart. But what happened? As a result of the collapse of that rigidity, that false reality that I was living, as a result of that bingo, another reality could come. Would I go back, despite everything, to what I was before I started to wake up and went through that shite? No freaking way. No way, thank you very much. No way. Hello, good evening and welcome. Here is this sport. And there's snooker on tonight. I was him? Oh my God! No, that was him. This is me. Different, simple as that. This is the big, big thing to get over. This is the four-letter word that controls the world. And, you know, I have, it's fear that allows this to happen. You know, this guy's in control because they're following and all the rest of it. Now, if any of these bloody sheep said, sod this for a lark, I'm off, he's in real bloody trouble now, isn't he? Where's the point of control now? It's not on the sodding tractor. He's got a hundred sheep to find. But here, oh yes, ba ba ba. Oh, did you see the news last night? Yeah, ba ba. He's in control, sitting on his sodding tractor, doing bugger all. This is the way the society works. Oh, I better not go out here. I better not go out there. No one's telling you not to, in fact. But it's your. It's again. It's the. It's the. It's the. The mouse in the. Um, in the laboratory maze, oh no, I'm going down there, not going down there, oh no, thermal, oh, all that stuff. And it means that we are in symbolically this state. And if we go, I am me, I am free, hey, you on the tractor, see ya. And everyone does that, God, the tractor's lost his power. He's not in control of the situation anymore because we've taken control back. And if the sheep did that, this guy would have no control over them. The idea is to lock us into a belief system, lock us into a uh, suppressed and uh, encased reality, and it's called fear. And fear puts you in your shell. He's, he's ever so insecure. He's always in his shell. I'm trying to bring him out of his shell. All these bloody phrases we use absolutely describe what we're talking about. And we get stuck in the bloody box. Oh, I'm going to Oxford this year. Pass me exam. Freedom or freedom? Freedom is what controls this reality. It's what controls our uh, energetic state, our vibrational state, our density, and all the rest of it disconnects us. F freedom is what can set us free. And, and fear of what? As um, Gandhi said, today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. Was it worth it? Was it? I don't... I know people, they're going to the dentist and they're going, oh God, I've got to go to the dentist in three weeks' time. Oh my God, I'm ever so worried. Oh no, oh God, oh no, I can't go out and worry. No, no, about the dentist. Three weeks later, they're sitting in the waiting room. Oh my God, I've got to the dentist. Oh my God. Uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, this way. Oh my God. Five minutes later, walks out. Well, we no problem. We're all right. No, no problem. Spent three weeks of agony projecting forward. Fear of yesterday or tomorrow. Why? When we get caught in this thing about survival, it's very important. Because when we get into a point of survival, we get into the reptilian brain. We lock in there because that's our survival instincts and our survival mechanism. Survival. Survival of what? Survival of life. I don't want to die. A doctor saved me. And all this stuff. There is no death. There is only life. There is only infinite consciousness, infinite awareness, infinite eternal existence within all that is, has been, and ever will be. There are the two points of observation. One, survive, survive, survive. One, there is nothing to survive. Chill out, mate. Okay? That's what it's like. So, there are very two different ways of looking at things. When we lock into body consciousness, 
we can lock into survival mode. Why? Because the body software has many survival um, mechanisms and programs within it. And that's not a bad thing, that's a bloody good thing. Because within this reality, this survival instinct of the, the um, holographic level of uh, the, the body computer is a good thing. We wouldn't last long if that, those survival mechanisms weren't here within the computer, within the world that we live in. It's when they are the governor and take over. They don't just react in times when we're in danger. They are there all the time. Oh, I'm ever so worried. My mother used to say about a neighbor, it's being, it's being so worried that keeps her going. What? What? But so many people, and, and you know, you, you know, you know I, and I noticed this from earlier in my life. I could worry for flipping England. You know, I ain't standing here cross-legged on a bloody mountain saying I've got, I'm, I'm speaking to, 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 to my disciples and all that shite. I have been through all this shit and continue to go through a lot of it. So when I'm talking about these things, I'm talking to my sodding self as much as I'm talking to anybody else. And, and uh, this is, this is, this is uh, what we all experience. It's not about this or that. God, the shite I've been through, I, I could, oh God, emotionally and all that other stuff. And so when we get caught in that, we get caught in body consciousness. And you get people, uh, 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 I call it emotional addiction. I, I, I had this at one time. An emotional addiction, you know the receptors of the cells that take in heroin and cocaine and all that stuff? Um, they... Um, are the same receptors that take the chemicals caused by emotions, because emotions create a chemical reaction in the body, and vice versa. Hence the mercury and the fillings and all that stuff. And it can, we can get into a state of emotional fear and fear of not surviving. It's kind of a, 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 all different expressions of that, where we need a fix when there's nothing to worry about. I noticed that. I felt, I felt uncomfortable. I was almost in, you know, emotional cold turkey at one time in my life when I didn't have anything to worry about. Because I, it's an emotional state, it's a chemical state, it's a drug state. And it's a body consciousness state, which is, has these survival programs. When we move our consciousness to this level, then we know there's nothing to survive. And so the survival instincts while they can react on a body level to um, uh, uh, physical danger, quote, they're not constantly um, constraining and influencing our reality. Now, what is there to worry about? What is there to fear of not surviving when you hear this? Everything from the beginning, my birth, my ancestors, my children, my wife, everything comes together simultaneously. I saw everything about me and about everyone who was around me. I saw everything they were thinking now, what they thought then, what was happening before, what was happening now. There is no time, there is no sequence of events, no such thing as limitation of distance, of period, of place, of time. I could be anywhere I wanted to be simultaneously. What is there to fear surviving or not surviving when we move to that level of consciousness? That's the level, if we get to it, and we can, we can come from that within physical embodiment, or what we call it, suddenly our lives transform, and if enough people do it, this reality transforms. Know thyself. That's something that we've been um, manipulated not to know. Don't ask questions, know the answer. When we're thinking, oh, uh, questions, 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 we're actually saying to ourselves, I don't know the answer. When if we just um, uh, get to that level of knowing, of intuitive knowing, you find the uh, answer without asking the question. You just know. This asks questions, trying to work things out. Chatter, 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 chatter. Wonder what that is. The reason at the level of intuitive knowing, the connection to higher awareness, you know the answer without asking the question, is because instead of um, asking the question within isolated consciousness, disconnected from infinite awareness, you're now connected to infinite awareness. So instead of asking the question, you know the answer, because infinite awareness is the all-knowing. 
There is where the answers lie. Without asking the questions, you just know. I, I just know I've got to be so-and-so tomorrow. How do you know that? I don't know. I can't explain it. I just know. And you go, and what happens? Something happens that takes you forward. Where is you'd have gone, no, I can't, I, no, I can't do that. No, no, you can't do that. You've got things to do. You've got to go to the supermarket tomorrow. Oh, I don't feel to go there. This intuitive level of knowing is our connection to higher consciousness. And this is, if you, if you watch it, always at war with, with intuition, nearly always. And uh, when we go with this intuitive knowing, again, right brain, and, 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 and don't let the left brain dominate. You can't do that, you've got a mortgage, and you've got, you've got an appointment tomorrow. You can't do that, you can't go to India. No, you've got a mortgage, all that stuff. This is always telling us what we can't do because it thinks in such limited terms of structure. This tells us what we are and what we can do. And if we choose to go with it, then we start to break out of this mind prison. And I have to say, what changed my life, I say more than anything else, was when I decided, funnily enough, just before I started to have these, this awakening, I decided, because of experiences I had, Experiences I didn't like again, but were a wonderful gift. I decided that if I ever had a situation again where my intuition said one thing and my head said another, I was going with my intuition every time. And I... And I went with it, and I went with it, and I went with it, and you may have noticed it got me into a bit of trouble sometimes. It got me into a bit of trouble. But what, and, and what happens then when you follow your intuition? And you get into a bit of trouble. I got in a bit of trouble, Betty, and all that stuff. Um, no one remembers that either. My bloody age, I don't know. This, this guy crosses the arms. See, I bloody told you, didn't listen to me. Get into trouble. Oh, I know, you should have listened to me. A lot of people go, yeah, I know, I know, I oh, know. I'll never do that again. But if you keep going with your intuition, you keep following this knowing, these, these urges, these passions, of what you want to do with your life and where you want to go and where you want to be, eventually the sequence of, uh, of uh, situations leads the left brain, which is an observer of reality, and if you talk its language, it can kind of come round. Um, and it says, hold on a second. When you follow your intuition, you, you get into a bit of trouble, but then that led to that and that led to that and that led to that. Oh, it works out in the end, doesn't it? And what happens, and this happened to me um, around the mid-90s, what I felt intuitively and what I uh, thought became one. So there was the war stopped. I want to do this. No, you've got to do that. You've got to do this. Stopped. And now the, the, they operate as one unit because this has seen enough of what intuition does to go, okay, I can see it. I'll go with this. And it's open to anyone to do that to stop that war between intuitive knowing because they should be working as one unit. They shouldn't be at war. All these different elements that decode reality should be working as one unit to do this. And then, then we can start controlling our own reality. Knowingly in awareness, because we're doing it anyway. And what these manipulators do, because they know this system, they impose and implant belief systems which then affect our energy field, which then draw to us uh, decoded reality, daily experience, that matches the belief systems that have been programmed into us. They are programming our reality through us. And when we clear that out, we then can consciously start to create our own, which is the worst nightmare of the manipulators. Worst nightmare. It was, it was in, the, in the Matrix movie when the Neo character um, went through the uh, death experience and, and, and came through it and realized it was an illusion and he stopped seeing people in the holographic world, as I would put it, as people and started seeing them like that when he realized it was all an illusion. That's when he was able to control his own reality. There's a lot in that movie that's true. And as we um, change our own energy field, we are then able to make that consciousness change available to other people. 
in this hundredth monkey syndrome they talk about, which is connection between people. And then we come system failure in this crap. Now, I've got 10 minutes left <laughs> before they throw me out. So I want to talk about this, and it comes on the end of all that I've talked about in this last section. There very much seems to be a shift in consciousness going on. When I first, um, when I first woke up, and amazing things were happening to me, and I didn't understand them. One of the themes at that time, we're talking 1990, was that <clears throat> there was a consciousness shift coming. I kept meeting psychic people a lot in those days, and they kept saying, I'm getting something, I'm being told to tell you this, and again and again it was, there's a consciousness shift coming. There is an awakening coming. People are going to come out of the trance in effect. And it's happening now. And now as the, as the 90s have become uh, the, the new century, more and more this stuff about this, this shift is uh, going on. An energy shift, which is um, acting like a spiritual alarm clock. And I've seen it. All over the world I've seen it. People starting to get it and wake up and see the true magnitude of who they are. This energy change is happening. Um, and therefore, those that open their minds to it are starting to access and decode different frequencies, different ranges of reality which are starting to change their experienced reality from division to oneness. And there's a lot of talk about 2012 and the Maya cal Mayan calendar and all that stuff. Um, I have to say I, I, I'm not one of those people that say everything's going to change in 2012. I don't see that. What I see is that this is a symbolic or more than symbolic window when terrific change is going to take place. And one, this cycle that we've been through is changing to another cycle which is going to be very different and far more near paradise than the prison that is emerging. And I, uh, I uh, in 1990, you know, I'm not really big into channeled information and stuff when, you know, psychics take all this stuff. I, you can get really good ones when you get out, when they really get out there, and you can get some really profound stuff which takes you on. But a, a, a lot of stuff is, is, um, is not like that, but some of it is. And in 1990, I experienced this, and it stood the test of time in my experience. It was a, a lady who um, channeled this... Uh, consciousness back in 1990 when I was like you know in la la land what's happening to my life and um, I'll just read what it said because it's so relevant to now um, with the hindsight of the years that have passed and if anyone doesn't you know believe in shape-shifting they should have seen this woman's face when she was doing this because she became someone else her face it was like whoa um, changed to a completely different uh, face and this is what it said. I feel you are sensing now the energies coming in, the energies surrounding your planet. This is causing many of you to ask questions. It is causing many of you to reevaluate completely your way of life, where you feel you wish to go, what you want to do. It is causing tremendous upheavals. Some of these upheavals are very confusing, very distressing, very disturbing. Some people in partnerships are finding they can no longer continue in those partnerships because their partners cannot tune into what they are tuning into. This is causing a great deal of disturbance. And I have said to this sensitive on more than one occasion that you must organize yourselves into groups to support each other. Now then, my own allegiance with your planet goes back to an Atlantean period when there were many energies being used and information and knowledge being used which were, for particular reasons of safety, withdrawn, shall we say to prevent complete catastrophe, to prevent total destruction of your planet. One could say these were sort of emergency measures, if you like, to prevent the inhabitants of this planet from an untimely destruction. Now at that time, shall we say, this knowledge was distributed only to the few. It was taught in what could call, uh, you could call a temple setting, though I'm very careful about using this word. It has connotations, maybe. So let me use that word in the broadest possible sense. There were those initiated into this knowledge, there were grades of initiation, and those who passed the full initiation, these were known as the guardians of the light and the keepers of the secret knowledge. This is the context from which I'm coming. There was a time when this knowledge and the energies were withdrawn. It is very difficult for me to explain to you precisely what I mean by that, so I will let you mull these things over. As the energies around your planet quicken, this is 1990, so these latent energies 
These energies which have been withdrawn will now be phased back in. They will gradually be awakened. As the consciousness level of your planet raises itself, those of you who are working together to raise your consciousness, you will be able to hold more and more refined vibrations, and so you will be able, we will be able to use you as a catalyst to be able to feed in more and more um, energies. Because as we change, we bring this um, change into this reality. As more of you raise yourselves to meet the challenge, so we can awaken more of these energies. Now, energy is consciousness, and the energies themselves contain the knowledge and the information which is beginning to surface again in your consciousness. So many of you will remember the Atlantean times. You will remember that you communicated with, say, dolphins and whales. You understood these sentient creatures. You could levitate. You could manifest things. You could cause spontaneous combustion by not miraculous means at all. Once you know what you're doing, these things follow. It is a matter of order. Now, I'm looking at a time on your planet when these energies, this knowledge is reawakened and reintegrated into your consciousness. I'm not looking at a time when this knowledge will be for the few, but when your whole planet will be awakened to this understanding, which you have simply forgotten. It is not a matter of new information. It is a matter of remembering who you are and where you come from. So you are being asked to change. You are being asked to change in a total way. It is not a matter of small changes, a little thing here, a little thing there. You are really being asked to turn yourselves inside out. There is such a massive shadow which must be cleared and it is up to um, uh, workers such as you to focus yourself on that challenge. Those of you who are in the forefront of this, you are rather like a snow plow. You are the thin end of the wedge. You really have, how shall I put it, to a certain extent I suppose, you have the shitty end of the job. You have an awful lot to do, but nevertheless you are capable of doing an awful lot. That is why you've chosen to come. That is why you've come here for, to really shovel some shit and therefore make some space behind you to make it easier for the others. As in your human body, there are energy lines and uh, meridian lines around your planet through your planet, which correspond, I suppose, very much to the acupuncture lines and meridians in your body. Where two lines cross, you create a vortex, a tiny vortex if it's two. The more lines that intersect, the bigger the vortex. Therefore, when you have a chakra, you have a large vortex of intersecting energy. The same with your planet. Where the most lines cross, there is the biggest vortex. Now, you could say that the plexus in and around the islands that you call the British Isles is the hub of the wheel of plexuses and energies which surround your planet. It has acted in other times like a fail-safe device. In order to activate these chakrit points upon your planet, the energies must all cross through the central point. They must all pass through the heart of the pattern. And it's no accident, I would suggest, that Britain and London and Scotland and whatever are one of the major centers for the hybrid bloodlines and the Illuminati on the planet because they understand the significance of its place, not because of it's a country, but its point on this um, energy grid. And this is why there are more stone circles and standing stones in, in uh, Britain, particularly on the western side, than anywhere else in the world per square mile. It's a very, very important place um, in, um, in energetic terms on the planet. And my, my feeling about this uh, awakening is that this is very, very much involved. I've got a, a lot more to do on this, to say the least, but I'm sure that the sun is far more than a source of heat. It is a place or a, 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 um, uh, an opening, a gateway, where great energetic change and code changes come into the solar system, same with others all around what we call the universe. And I, I'm I feel that at the elite level, not among the general population, one of the focuses on the sun or the reasons for the obsession with the sun is the knowledge of this, um, right going back to the ancient world. I also feel that the, the black holes and stuff are also ways that these energetic codes come in and out of this reality. So we're in a situation where there is an energetic change. More and more people are feeling it. Of course, people who are more awake are going to feel it first, but even people you thought were never going to kind of open their minds to this, now they're doing the same. Something's going on. 
And it's going on in the period that in the 1990s I was told it was going to go on. And we can flow with it, get in the right brain, hey man, and just go with it. And uh, let life take us where it needs to go intuitively. Um, or we can fight it, and, and in which case we're going to expend more and more and more energy, getting more and more stressful, trying to stay still and to hold on to the way things were, as if the way things were in this manipulated reality are the way things we always want them to be. So this change is uh, giving us even a bigger opportunity um, to, um, to change the nature of the way we see the world and ourselves. And I think it's no accident, the more I understand this, that it's now of all times that this great Orwellian stuff is being thrown at us in every way, in food additives and, and, and electromagnetic uh, uh, pollution and uh, uh, manipulation and all the programming and all the surveillance and all the microchipping. It's, it's a response to the fact that they know this change is taking place and they're trying to suppress it so uh, fewer people as possible actually start to lock into it and become transformed by it. Because when we do, we're no longer in a smaller box than they're in, and therefore they're no longer in control. And this whole game of soldiers can just break up because it's a house of cards. It's a house of cards, and we are holding it together. When we go, whoops, thank you very much, not holding that up anymore, bang, gone. We are holding it together. That's the point. It's not that they have constructed this. They have manipulated us to construct it. You cannot solve problems with the same level of consciousness that created them. No, but the same level of consciousness is not where we're going now. We're going to another one to change our reality. And it's a time to choose. A time to choose if we want to flow with this and become... Uh, the full magnitude of who we are or whether we want to stay in the box like little frightened mice saying, oh my God, I can't say boo to a goose, the goose won't like it. Free your mind and let nothing and no one enslave it is a great uh, uh, motto uh, for uh, everyone, I would suggest, including myself. As Menken said, as a start of this event today. I believe that any man that takes the uh, liberty from another into his keeping is bound to become a tyrant, and that any man who yields up his liberty in however slight the measure is bound to become a slave. That's how we got into this. Voltaire, so long as the people do not care to exercise their freedom, those who wish to tyrannize will do so. For tyrants are active and ardent and will devote themselves in the name of any number of gods, religious or otherwise, to put shackles on sleeping men. We have created it because we have become sleeping men and women. We can do things on a physical level, which are a reflection of our changing consciousness, like ceasing to cooperate with the system of control. We've had, a, we've had a discussion outside the White House. We've had a discussion and we've decided this is going to happen. Mass of the people. No, it's not. We ain't doing that. Where's the power? Gone. Gone. The power is with us. And we have been cooperating with the building of our own prison. When we cease to cooperate, the prison can't be built because there's not enough people um, who, who, to do it if the people who are being enslaved don't do it to themselves. As um, Albert Einstein said, the pioneers of a warless world are the youth that refuse military service. I want to stop war. Well, don't fight then. Don't fight. If they don't fight and they don't fight, where's the war? It's used to say in the 60s, what if, what if we had a war and no one turned up? No fripping war. <laughs> and, and, you know, support our troops, they tell us. The people who say that in the dark suits are, are, are sending young kids to the slaughter just to serve their bloody agenda. That's how much they want to <laughs> support our troops. Sodom. They never fight the wars. Have you noticed that? George Bush declares a war. George Bush declares a war. If he'd have been on the front line when the first bullet was fired in Iraq, he'd have been under a bed in Houston when the second bugger went off. 
These people don't fight wars. They send young people to fight bloody wars. When they don't, there's no bloody war. That's what we need to do. And it's like religions. So, you know, the guy, the guy in another country, the leader, he sends his youth off to war. This guy in this country sends this youth off to war. The two youths fight each other. For what? For two pairs of prats with an agenda that they even know about, probably. If we can move our point of observation from in this world um, to the out-of-body state, then we change our reality. And in an out-of-body state, if we ask ourselves, so often, you know, I, I, say, I say this, what would change this world dramatically uh, overnight is if everyone started doing what they knew to be right instead of what they thought was right for them in the moment. What a transformation that would be. All the time, we, we, we intuitively know what is right, but it's like, yeah, but, but what are the consequences for me? What are the consequences for me or what stops stopping this transformation of this world happening? Because, oh yeah, I think it's unjust, but if I do something about the unjustness of this, what will, what will be the consequences for me? People say to me all the time, insiders, look, I'll give you this information, but ooh, you know, don't mention my name, will you? All right, I'll do it then. And, and when, um, when we get to that point where we're doing what we know to be right, instead of doing what we think is right for us in the moment, then everything changes. And what is right for us in the moment? Only what body consciousness thinks it is. In the out-of-body state, when we're, we're, we're in that state, are we saying, oh my goodness me, I ain't half glad that I didn't do what was right there because I'd, I'd have had a bit of a problem here. No, no, we'd have said, oh, sh I wish I'd have done what was right there because that was the right thing to do. That's the point of observation when we're out of this program reality. As Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Injustice for people we don't like is just as important as um, injustice against people we do. What would oneness do? That's the question. If we were in that oneness state, what would it do in this situation? Would it say, what are the consequences for me, or would it do what it believed to be right? As this man said, it is, if it's not right, don't do it. If it's not true, don't say it. Well, okay, that's changed the bloody world straight away. As Martin Luther King said, cowardice asked the question, is it safe? Expediency asked the question, is it politic? Vanity asked the question, is it popular? But conscience asked the question, is it right? And there comes a time...